What is up, family? I hope that you are doing really, really well. I'm so happy you're here. Um, some fun updates, as you probably have heard by now. We have a Patreon, which is really exciting. Go check that out. And um, yeah, I'm just glad you're here and stuff. And we are doing a very fun video for tonight slash today, whenever you are watching it. This is going to be a detailed ramble about filmmaking and my process with it. I'm going to talk about my experience. I'm going to talk about basically my process with it, basically how I get inspired and um, my timeline for things, basically. Um, if you don't know, I am a filmmaker. I'm an award-winning director, which is crazy to say. Many of you have followed my journey. I literally started this channel when I was making that short film. So you can go on the community tab, you can see uh, the festival I was just in. But I wanted to, to basically do a ramble for you. I know a lot of you have missed me making these, so I'm just gonna go for it. And I'm just gonna talk pretty quickly about what everything has been like. So if you have any questions, throw it down below. But here we go. So my experience being my experiencing my experience my experience with filmmaking, excuse me, is um sort of new. I kinda wanna give you a background of who I am and where I come from. So I've been in the art world, art world for a very long time. I went to school, I went to NYU for acting. So I acted ever since I was in high school, and even before that I was an actor. I did musicals, I did straight plays, um, not to be confused with the gay plays. I did not do those, although I wish I would have. Just kidding. A straight play, if you don't know, is just a play that doesn't have music in it. A play with music is a musical. There you go. So I really dipped my feet into entertainment and into filmmaking later on um, in college. I'll tell you all about that. I was in a feature film and stuff, which I'll get to. But I'm going to start off with kind of how I get inspired in my whole process with art. I was very fortunate to realize when I was a sophomore in high school, um, we had a really big like theater program. It was one, actually, honestly, between you and I, it was better than NYU Tisch, which is where I went for college. There was a lot of funding at my high school, and it was very competitive. They had around eight shows a year, like five of them were plays, three of them were musicals. Um, I think that makes sense for math. And um, I loved doing it. Freshman year, I did a freshman cabaret, which I did um, with fellow freshmen. A cabaret, if you don't know, it's basically vignettes from different shows that are all put together in this big show. So think of your favorite scenes and your favorite music from all these different shows combined in what's known as a cabaret. I did a scene from Billy Elliot. I was still a very straight acting kid in high school, and um, as we all are, as maybe you aren't, or maybe we all aren't, but um, I think, you know, as we get older we discover who we are, that's a very fun thing, but I did a Billy Elliot s sketch scene where at the end of the first act, right before intermission, I went on stage with a friend, someone that was a friend, a very flamboyant well-known flamboyant um, boy in our year who turned out to be gay. Um, just so you know, I'm also queer, so I'm not slandering anything. Um, but I remember I did this Billy Elliot scene. If you've never seen Billy Elliot, it's about this boy who basically, I actually have no idea, it's about this boy who um, basically, I actually have no idea what Billy Elliot is, if you know it, put it down in the comments, but there's a scene where it's like in London and he wears a dress, basically. So we have this musical number where I have to put on a dress and I basically dance in it. And I remember being very insecure about it in high school. Um, I remember going into high school thinking that everyone would think I was gay if I did theater. And um, I remember that being a really big thing for me. Um, because, whether I knew or not, I think I secretly 
was. Um, knew I was always queer, and I guess I didn't want to be. I was very, very in control of my perception of how I wanted to be seen, right? And this is what kind of goes for filmmaking and acting. No wonder I loved acting. Acting and filmmaking are very perception heavy. We control, as an actor or as a director, we control what the audience sees, what they feel. That's what makes it so fun. It is a very visceral connection to other people. We allow ourselves to tap into their imaginations and control how they view the world. So as a young a kid, I, I was very tapped into how do people pursue me, all this stuff. Well, I did this and I was very nervous. I was very nervous that everyone was gonna think I was gay or whatever. Maybe they did, but most of them I don't think did. Not that it's a big deal. Um, but I remember I was really nervous, and what surprised me about this moment and why I'm bringing it to you up is because this moment I danced on stage in front of like all the freshmen, and we had like 500 kids, really cool people, really nerds, like, and I remember doing that, and afterwards everyone being like, holy crap, Nick, that was amazing, like, I got a lot of kudos, and I got a lot of girls, which was so funny, even though I'm not into girls, but, um, it was something that I'm basically bringing back in the process because that was my moment um, that I can kind of go back to where I was brave and I realized that a lot of people when they look at art they want to see someone brave they want to see something brave they want to experience something they're not always identifying the actor with the role and that was something I never really clicked um, and people admire bravery so that was my first moment where I did theater and I was very much like concentrated on perception and very much being like I like theater I can be bold I can make art and I can be bold so this is the how I kind of tapped into it I then did some plays and I learned that I love method acting what is method acting you might be say well remember Heath Ledger in Batman he did method acting he passed away unfortunately method acting is an acting form where you and you, you might be like this too, if you ever take on a scene or, you know, you act something, do you think of yourself as the actual character? That is basically the question of method acting, means that you live your life through the lens of this character, even when you're outside of the role, and it's not healthy, but um, I... That's how I fell into acting. I remember I was playing an old man that was Southern and I would just view my life like his and I love that. So I got into method acting. I loved acting and I loved it so much. I got this deep connection to this passion that I then went into school for it. I went into college. So I auditioned for NYU senior year. And if you want me to talk more about this, let me know. I can always do a ramble about college for me. Um, but I, I knew there was one moment in high school where I was auditioning for all these plays. It was called Playwrights. Oh, it was something with playwrights. So students would write the plays and then we'd audition for them. It was like 10 minute plays. And I remember auditioning and lose. It was so crazy. It was, I think I'll set up the stage scene. So it's like this room and then there's this table with all these like maybe 10 people that are students that were like directing these plays. And you go up and you stand in front of them, you slate, which if you don't know, it means you go up and you go, my name is Nick, I'm going to be reading this monologue from this play. And then they'd be like, okay, go ahead. And there was a scene that I did from, I think, The Death of a Salesman, um, where he's talking about his dad or something, but um, or losing someone, but there was this monologue. And I've never really felt this again, which is sort of sad, but it's it's really the driving force of why I do art and filmmaking. And if you're an artist, you probably have this moment for you too. That's an aha moment. But I um, did this scene and I felt so present. I felt like I lost the lines, but then they would come to me. And I felt like I wasn't in the room. It felt like a very spiritual thing. And I know that sounds very cheesy if you're not creative, but it it was wild. And I got emotional and I just felt if I felt the peace very viscerally. And it 
read really well. Everyone was very Im impressed and shocked, and I got called back for everything. And it was weird because that moment, I always try to replicate that moment, but it was basically like I had this monologue, and I think I, ju I just like, when you're acting, you memorize all, you memorize lines, and you um, dive really deeply into things. And um, you are gonna like memorize all the lines, you're gonna like, yeah, basically do a lot of work, and then you have to like let it go when you're acting. So it seems authentic. It's very difficult. You should try acting. It's very hard. Um, but I think it was that letting go that I basically had that really beautiful moment. So that was a drive for me. I was like, whoa. Um, and then I went to NYU. So this is all my background for how I got a theater and how I love art. So think about that. I got some external validation for friends. I then also had a very like spiritual connection with it in high school. I jump into NYU, I audition, I get in, I was so excited and I just do acting. I really thought I was gonna be an actor. I still think I'm gonna be an actor, but I also don't, life is weird. Um, and um, I then went to an acting conservatory school and there, that's where I learned how to do playwriting, directing, movement, and everything. I got placed into a studio. NYU Tisch has a studio system, which if you don't know, there's like seven studios and a conservatory for acting. What that means is that basically five days a week we did acting. We basically didn't really do anything else. Um, and they threw us in the ringer. I adore NYU. I thought Tisch was the most amazing school. I was in Playwrights Horizons for my studio, and that was the one studio that wasn't just solely acting. Directors came into that studio. We mixed with directors and playwrights, and we basically learned how to create our own content as like a production company. So this freshman year, I was taking playwriting classes. I was also doing acting, and I was doing directing, and. Basically, they were teaching us a foundation of how to create and how to... They were really good at NYU like, talking early on, being like, you might not act after school. And I remember that being so dejecting and so fleeting because you're in this environment where everyone is so driven and passionate to be acting and to succeed and be a star and it's competitive, but it's also very nurturing. and you create these cocoons of exploration where you are gonna be in a room and you're gonna try a monologue, you're gonna write something and you are gonna watch the people around you basically blossom, cry, be super happy. You see all of their emotions and you're with them all year. So you see every single facet of them, which is was one of the most incredible experiences ever. Um, it got tricky because you're like 18 year olds, 19 year olds, basically in a class filled of 18 people, 14 people that you like move around the classes with, that's your little cohort. And we were color purple, uh, color groups, and my color was purple. It was just such a great experience. And I basically learned um, the foundation of art, which then leads to the foundation of filmmaking and my artistic process. So I basically learned how to create in all different mediums in directing and playwriting and acting and all that and although i was very actor driven that was probably the best thing i ever learned in nyu one of my best friends uh at nyu was in the film program and a lot of my friends were in film this is what's kind of crazy is because even though i was in the drama department all my friends were actually in the film department and I don't know how that happened. I think I just got sick of some of the drama people. Drama is very ego egotistical, very emotional. Think about very emotional people there. So I befriended film people and I basically began to be in their short films and I actually landed in being one of, in one of their feature films in uh, 2019 which is when I graduated, and uh, it was a feature film in Dallas, Texas, where I started. It's called uh, The Doldrums. It's on Amazon, so you can check that out if you ever want to see me act. And um, I 
began to be in films, and I did a studio that was filmmaking senior year that was basically acting for film. It was fine, but the real experience is being on film sets. So that is all my background. And then many of you also know that I then moved to LA. I worked in production. I did, um, I did, um, location scouting. I worked on big sets like Shameless and Dollface and The Flight Attendant and I learned production. After senior year of college, I had a professor that told me, hey Nick, I think you'd be a really good writer and I think you'd be really good at writing and producing and acting your stuff. So I started screenwriting and I basically did screenwriting for a really long time. So I did that. I did, I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person where it's like, I have to do something sometimes enough times to prove to myself that it means something to me in order for me to do something with it. So screenwriting, I was doing it enough. I was, I read books. I got really into world building. Like I said, you know, I'm a method actor. I love creating worlds and writing is creating worlds, not all stop, not non-stop all day because you're basically problem solving a plot which is very exciting um as to where i get my inspiration for filmmaking i can pinpoint it to one thing which is really fascinating i was doing an internship through nyu last the like last or my sophomore year and i it was an la abroad program which is funny because it's not really abroad but I interned in LA and we were with a cohort and I was the only actor and I was with all these other film majors from NYU. And we were in a class, we would take class through the school and then also do our internship. And there was this guy who I really liked and we were really good friends after, but when I first met him, we all sat in class and we introduced ourselves. We said our name, I think our dream and what inspires us and he, everyone's like, oh, I love film, I love action, I want to be a producer, all this stuff. He said, I want to be in nature. I love films that are about nature. And everyone was like, that's weird. They're like, that's so specific. Like, why? Like, okay. And everyone kind of read him off. And he later went to like the forest after graduation and he doesn't do film anymore but that clicked with me because i love nature and i think i subconsciously took that from him my short film flowers it's very nature inspired um i really view um stories i view nature as kind of like the most organic storyteller there is an it's where our roots are as humans. I think nature is very healing, and I love that a lot of the problems we face as humans are actually very natural. They happen in nature, and sometimes we don't allow ourselves to see it in nature, and then we think, oh, woe is me, but it's actually just part of the entire ecosystem of the world. Uh, flowers, like my short film, you know, we bloom into these new, beautiful people, but then we also you know, um, die off as well, and um, I got really inspired by him. Now, filmmaking, I, if you are a filmmaker, you want to be a filmmaker, um, just start doing the dang thing. Um, I used to be really insecure that I didn't know about cameras, I didn't know about coloring and all this stuff, and I still don't, but um, when you're really passionate about something, you need to remember that the joy is not being an expert, the joy is learning about it. So the joy in filmmaking is learning how to be a filmmaker and stuff. Um, and that's why I'm working on a feature film now, um, directing. So something I, I want to talk to you guys about is directing. Um, my short film and what it takes to be a director, what I've learned, um, if, you're, if you are an actor or if you want to be a director. A director is someone that needs to be pulse to the wall, yes or no. 
uh, when I was on set for my short film, people look at directors for answers, either yes or no. Are we doing this? Are we not doing this? What are our perimeters? Um, all of that stuff. I also think the job of a director is to encapsulate a bubble around the actors, so you're basically setting tone for the set. Actors coming from an acting background, I know how precious they are and how sensitive actors become when they go into their role. Um, even if they're being a bully, even if they're being whatever, they have energy. I view it very spiritual, but they have energy that needs to be protected, that, you know, not anyone can just go up and talk to them, tap on them. Actors need to be able to make the choice if they want to engage with the crew or if they don't. They shouldn't ever feel pressured to. And I was in a feature film in Dallas, Texas, where I think I felt a little pressured sometimes as an actor um, to chat with crew and all this stuff, which was probably a really good thing for me, but as a method actor, I really wanted to be by myself a lot of the time. Um, so yeah, I learned, I know this is kind of like a, a random ramble, but I basically learned all about cameras and, and set etiquette and all that through work on production, but then also by hiring people that are really a lot better than me. Um, I think people that are better than you respect you when you hire them because they know that you respect them. Um, they don't look down on you for not knowing stuff. Um, so, yeah. And filmmaking, I think, is one of those things that I also well, get really inspired by because it's visual. Something that I think some people will forget is that there is you can have a story idea, but then there's one way to do it through film and one way to do it through theater. Theater is a very sound, it's very sound, it's very, you know, you're in the same environment as someone, whereas filmmaking is very visual. So I always come from a lens of storytelling. I, I view things very visually. When I'm writing, I pick really visual, um, images that basically tell the story and then I work around it. So if I know, oh, I love trees and I love the rain and I want someone standing in the rain, I want someone us to feel crying and I want someone running down a road, I want to feel panting, I want to feel the sweat, I want to feel, um, you know, all of those things. I, 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 I write them all down, I do a Pinterest board and I just start gathering all these images. I also think that every story needs a, oh, wouldn't that be cool if moment. So something that drives me for my feature film is like, wouldn't it be cool if you could reconnect and actually visually see your older self? If you met your old, if you met your younger self um, today, what would you tell them? That is what drives my feature film, and that's for every story. The story for Flowers is if it was obvious who was the love of your life, would you be brave enough to see them as that? That's what um, Flowers is. And I think every story needs that um, heart. I encourage you if you ever feel like you want to be involved in my process if you love everything i'm talking about like i do and you know all the storytelling and everything go to my links and on the bottom of the link tree is stay connected with my art i will email you when stuff you know happens but also feel free to reach out to me join our patreon and that is a sacred place that i'll i can be more intimate with you guys if you want to chat about that stuff but i personally think that every story needs to have a lesson to be taught and it is a place for people to heal. That's how I view it. Healing. You basically disengage the audience, you have them in your hand, and then you're allowing them to experience a new way of thinking in life. And I think it's very spiritual, I think it's very and I get really excited about it. Um, I know this was sort of a 
hate detail ramble sort about my creative endeavors and directing and all that. I apologize if it was a little loosey-goosey, but I love art. Let me know if you want a more detailed explanation on any of this and I'll write it down and stuff, but I, I thought, I hope you enjoy this. If you did, leave a B emoji at the end so I know you made it that far. And uh, I love you. Thanks so much for being here. Let me know if you have any other questions on anything. Um, yeah, if no one's told you, you are so loved, you are so special, and thank you for being you. Okay, I will see you very soon.